Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melder Production, and today I'm going to show you how you can make a timpani sound in M Sound Factory. So before I showed you how you could make a snare drum style sound, but uh, I decided this time I'm going to do a timpani drum, and this one is actually a little bit different. Uh, sorry it took me so long to get to this, but uh, I wanted to make sure it actually sounded good, or at least in my opinion good. I'll, I'll let you hear. So this is the, the device I just started working on, so I'll let you hear it. It's not quite done, but uh, here's what it sounds like. So there's the sound, and now I'll go through how I made it. So let's start with a blank instance here, so everything is uh, on polyphonic. Uh, you see where the attack, delay, sustain is, or decay, sustain is, etc. There's nothing in here. So the first thing I want to add is a modal filter. Okay, and we're going to set this to all harmonics so this is just something I made just so you can turn on every single one of the harmonics here I'm gonna turn the output down and let's just leave this like this for now and now let's set up the exciter so I'm gonna go into drum synthesizer 4 in in I know somebody's asking me last time like what are you what are you talking about exciter so I'm just using this the drum synthesizer 4 in in I right click it here and I try to rename it exciter and that's just so it's easier for me later to remember what I did because sometimes if you have like three or four filters or different things you're like what is this what did I do with this so it's just helpful for you so there we have that I'm gonna go into the editor here and in previous videos I showed this but I'll show this again quickly I want to make sure I'm using a sine wave which I am I'm going to set the oscillator frequency and let's just set it like right here around a thousand uh, uh, hertz or kilohertz I should say or one kilohertz, sorry, you know where it is, you can see it. Uh, and then move this down here, and just curve it down like this. Okay, it didn't, you don't have to be exact, just as long as it's like an exponential curve. Uh, and then make sure the length is down, let's try 20 or so. Now let's actually hear this. I'll play something on my keyboard. Okay, that seems alright. Nothing strange is happening. I might bend this envelope up too. Sometimes by doing this, it'll allow some of the lower notes to uh, ring out and be louder. So that just changes it a little bit. It's not so important. I'll uh, just bring the volume down to negative three because I'm going to add some noise in here too. So turn that off. Let's use the noise now. 100 milliseconds seems fine. The envelope seems generally fine. Maybe I could move it up a bit or or not. It doesn't really matter that much. But the main thing is the low pass here. So without it, it sounds like this. I don't want that. Low pass on. Now put them, actually let me decrease the volume a bit. Now put them both on. You can adjust that however you want. So that's it for the exciter. Uh, we can do more things with it later, but I think that's enough. I also like to put on the auto restart. That's useful sometimes. Um, but let's go into the modal filter now. Now we need to set this up. So we have all the harmonics on, but we actually need a structure. So let's open this up. Let's go to A here. Now let's analyze a sample. So all you need is just a sample of one hit from a timpani drum. There's lots of free samples, you can find those online, so just look yourself, you can find them, you can get them off a recording you have, wherever. So I'll just load a file here, I have something, here's one, click OK. Now the settings I have, I have expect in harmonic, I want to have the threshold up a little bit, if you have it too far down it's not good, so I like to have like 50 to uh, maybe 30, but of course this depends on the sample and how loud it is, etc. Uh, but then I'm just going to move it around, and what I want is I want this here to be a little bit higher than the others. So, like this. This seems alright. Uh, you can go and mess around with this more, but basically when I hit this, it should just sound like uh, hitting a piece of metal, like this. That's okay, but it sounds more like a bell than a timpani. Now, to get it to sound more like a timpani, what we're going to do is lower the resonance. I usually find between like 50 and 60 is good, so let's move it down while I'm playing it so you can hear what's happening. So 
So there, you can probably start to hear a little bit of that timpani character come out. So that's good. Let's raise the output here. Later it's going to get louder, but for now let's just raise it up so you can hear it. So it sounds like that. Now, one of the problems I'm having here is there's not enough punch. So one way we can do that is by having a quick pitch drop. So we're going to go to the semitones here. Click this. Add attack one. Now we're going to go into here and we're just going to move this down just like we did before with the other things. So it's just going to be a quick pitch drop and make sure it's not too long. Let's try about like 20 milliseconds, 15 milliseconds around there. Let's try 16, 18. See how this sounds. Oh, also remember to turn the depth up so we can go all the way up to, I think, what is it? 48 uh, semitones, but mm, try it. Just move it up a little bit until it sounds good to you. So. So there it is with it on, off, on. So there we go. We have our punch. You can set it wherever you like, whatever sounds best for you. So there's a few other things that we can do to add a little bit more punch. So first, let's go into globals. One thing I want to do here is let's turn the velocity off. So that way, every time I'm hitting it, it's hitting with the same velocity. We'll add our own velocity later, but this is just to help make things easier to hear at first. Okay. And then next thing we're going to do is set the key range. So timpanis can't play, you know, all over the keyboard. They don't have that same range. So let's just set it for this, these two octaves we're using. So first I'll play the high note here. Okay, there's our high C, now the lowest C. Okay, we'll move it down, there we go. So now we have the ranges for the most part correct, but now let's talk about the punch. So another way we can change the punch is by setting the global envelope. So let's first turn the sustain down. You're probably thinking, what are you doing? But we're gonna replace that with the decay here. So let's set this for about, I don't know, maybe two seconds or so. You can set this however you like, uh, whatever sounds good to you. I can bend this up a little bit like that. Another thing you'll notice, you're like, hey, the release cuts off automatically. You can do that if you want. So that way, if you want to be like kind of, um, I don't know, like a dampening, you can do that. Or you can make it a little bit longer like this. That sounds a little bit better to me, but of course, adjust that however you like. But to get more punch, we can use this hold feature. So what we're going to do is set hold, and this is going to be how long our transient is. I recommend around like 15 to maybe 40 or maybe 50 like that. And then we're going to move this down. So you see, you can see on the graph like this, if I move it all the way down. That's much punchier than this. That's louder, but this has more punch. Okay, so now we're starting to get there like, okay, it's starting to sound kind of like a timpani, but we have more to do. So also timpanis, it seems like they have a little change in pitch as you're hitting them. So if you do all of it using like the semitones of the synths, I found it doesn't sound right. I found if you just use one harmonic, the bass, the uh, fundamental and change that, it, that one really helps. So what we're gonna do is just use this detune and go from a little bit below it to a little bit above it like this. So you can hear like, oh yeah, that does sound kind of like a timpani, or at least it does to me. So I'm going to set this first at negative, actually, yeah, negative 0.5. So that's just, you know, like half a semitone down. And let's just go into here and use attack two. We're going to do the exact same thing as before. Just turn it in inverse here and set this to 1000. And then... Just kind of bend it up here, okay? Actually, I can do it a little bit lower, but wherever you feel sounds good. Now here, what I want to do is I don't want it to go right into the middle. I want it to go a little bit over. So if you look here, it says max. Let's do max like 
eight or so. So it's going to start half a tone below the pitch and then go a little bit over the pitch. So it should sound like this. So I think you can probably hear that, but it's kind of subtle that boom, boom, like that. But that sounds good to me. So now we have that. We have most of the things we want, but there's something else to make this sound a little bit better. I want to bring out those harmonics a little bit more. And one thing we can do is use the oscillator shaper. You're thinking, what are you going to do with this? And so this works. I, I don't even know how it works. It almost works as a, almost like a distortion or FM synthesis. And so what we have here is a... We have it, it looks like just normal oscillator, but this works almost like a filter. And so what we're gonna do is just set this to sine wave. You can probably experiment with more things too. And uh, let me turn the volume down so you can hear it. So it sounds more compressed, but you also hear more of the harmonics, and that's what we want. And we can actually do more with this. So not only can we do that, but let's try the bend. Now listen as I move the depth of the bend around. So remember, all these are the same velocity also. Okay, so what we're going to do is take this and set the depth at 40, and now use our velocity to move this up to 60. So low notes are going to have the bend at 40 and the hard, the notes that are hit hard will be at 60 like this. And so that's sounding better to me, but one problem I'm having is listen as I go lower on the keyboard. You hear that distortion? I don't really want that. And you're thinking, how, why is that happening and how can I get rid of it? The reason it's happening is the lower notes have more energy than the higher notes, so they're driving this oscillator shaper more. And how can I get rid of it? The way I can get rid of it is by using a filter, a high pass filter. So all we're going to do is just insert a band pass filter here, turn off the low pass filter. I'll set this to HP10, high pass filter with a 24, or sorry, HP24 high pass filter with 24 decibel per octave slope. And let's set it to constant. Set the resonance to around 30 because I don't want a resonant peak. Now, all we're going to do is play a few of the low notes and then we're going to move around this frequency until that's gone. So let's listen for distortion. Okay, seems like it's for the most part gone. So let's listen to it. Okay, and to me now this is really sounding like a uh, timpani. And so from here, there's a few more things we can do, but the main thing I probably want to do is set a filter here to, uh, just used for my velocity. Um, so, well, actually, I probably should have labeled these other things so they're easier to remember, but you're going through it with me, so we know what we're doing. Uh, so here, I'm going to use another low-pass filter, actually, a low-pass filter instead of a high-pass, at 24 decibels per octave. Set the resonance around 30 again. We're going to set the frequency at one octave above, and then we're going to use velocity again to control this, velocity. And then we're going to set this to around, like, four octaves or so, a little bit over four. Now you're probably saying like, why, where are you getting this four octaves? Why, why do you know that? Are you just guessing? And part of it is me just guessing, but there is actually a method to my madness. If you look here in the modal filter, and then we go into A, you'll see here's zero and here's four octaves. So everything's cut off there. So now when I hit it very lightly, the filter will be mostly closed. When I hit it hard, it'll open up. Mm, 
still driving that oscillator shaper a bit too much. Maybe I can bring this down to like seven or six like this. Might have to bring that down a little bit more to like five or four. But of course, you can set that however you like. Um, so that's the basic idea. And from there, I would do something else. Like, for example, put convolution reverb or uh, algorithmic reverb, whichever you prefer. Use a hall. So maybe something like this. And there we go. And just uh, one or two other things to help you. If you notice in here with uh, the first one, if you're noticing that the low notes sound a little bit muddy, and you're like, ah, oh, it seems like the harmonics are kind of fighting each other. One thing you can do is all these harmonics where you see that they're almost an octave, like 12, but it's 12.23, just make these exactly 12 or other multiples like 24. Like, ah, oh, this one's almost 24. Uh, let's see, do we have 36 anywhere? Here's 36. Uh, 48 over here, any place? 48, uh, yeah, probably can barely hear that anyways. But that will just kind of clean it up a little bit. If you do too much of this, it's going to completely ruin the sound, but just a little bit will kind of help, I think. Another thing you might want to do is just add an oscillator briefly just so you can hear and make sure you're actually in tune. So, eh, it's not perfect, but pretty close. And let's try a high note. Okay. And so we can adjust those uh, fundamental settings here if you think it's too far off, etc. And of course, I was probably with the, for the device, I'll let you control the sense so you can do the fine-tuning things yourself and of course you can use other things like uh, any other effects uh, that you might want to do with this are also possible uh, i might want to layer some like transient hit on top of this just so i can have a stronger transient if that's what you want um and there's other things i could do with this that i didn't show here but i showed in the other one here for the position i'm just using a comb filter and you can change the sound that way. So let's say it's the hit position. So as I move it, listen to the sound. So you can use a comb filter to do that type of stuff too. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how to make a timpani style sound. And of course you can use this for other things besides timpanis. I hope this just concept is useful for you for making your own like creative things. So you don't even need to make you know real things. You can make your own drum, whatever you want. So if you like this, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below and check out all the other plugins at meltaproduction.com. Until next time, see you.